Hello there, this is uh, Rank Carcass. I got a quick video here. It's uh, I was planning on doing a series on DIYing my table. And uh, this is uh, probably one of the quick ones. It's basically just about roundels. So when I first bought this game, Historical Board Gaming, that sells the game, didn't actually have all their fancy uh, roundels out yet. So they had the paper ones which are basically just like these ones here. And I, I wasn't really willing to, I didn't, I didn't really want something. I wasn't sure if I wanted that or not, or maybe I was going to make my own or a wood doweling or something, something pretty hard. Right. But now I notice that they make their own pretty much the way I was planning on making mine. So I might save myself the time and effort or I might feel crafty yet. I'm not sure. But, uh, so right here, you got a line of roundels in the bottom here. These are the ones that come in uh, Global 1940. Uh, I believe it's this first and second edition have them both. And uh, yeah, these are just your basic standard markers. As you can see, they're not very centered. The manufacturer didn't uh, make them all perfectly centered. But uh, yeah, I try to make mine a little bit better. What I found with this game is I also needed, if I played the Netherlands as a separate power, I needed Dutch roundels. I just got this one because it matches the map. I mean, Vichy France roundels. I needed some roundels for the Far East Command because they all have the Union Jack here. I don't know if you can. Then for the Spanish Civil War, I needed two different roundels. And for the Chinese Civil War, which is a new edition, I needed the Communist Chinese roundel to match the Democratic China. And uh, this was the Out of Box Italy in Global 1940 by Axis and Allies. But uh, Historical Board Gaming's 1936 Global War Map uses the uh, actual roundel with the... Uh, Green center and the white white with the red outer ring. Basically the reverse of the color is from here. So first I made these, but then when I was looking for images, I found this one here and I really preferred that. So I just made a bunch of those. Uh, speaking of preferring, I wasn't a big fan of this Anzac symbol. So I made up a couple of kiwis and kangaroos. And all these are is really just some cardstock or a cereal box or whatever. I used the same punch I made these paper out of. So I guess we'll go on to the punch. Punch I picked up in a scrapbooking section of a crafting store. This is a three quarter inch, 1.91 centimeter circle punch. And you can see through the side there. It doesn't take very thick paper. So I'm stuck with basically a cereal box is kind of the limit of this. And uh, the reason I like this one, it had a little catch on the bottom for when you're punching it to collect the punch outs. But uh, I want to be able to see it so I can line it up as centered as possible instead of trying to use these little arrows. Uh, nice glare there. There's uh, arrows on the side here and in the front. If you try to use those to line it up, good luck to you because you're doing it blind. You're going to line it up for the center of where these arrows meet on the sides. We made a lot of off-centered ones. But anyway, I'm just going to show you a quick thing about uh, the paper I used for this. Because uh, first I just used regular paper and a glue stick and on the cardboard, that's fine. But I found uh, something like my magnets where they're pretty sturdy and they they uh, scrape and rub pretty good when I try to pull them apart. So this here is a blank sheet, solid sheet of sticker paper. You just peel off the back and stick it in anything if you want to do a full sheet. But I wanted to do something I could punch out myself. So yeah, this is uh, the one I picked up. Any uh, stationery store sells these things. It was under 10 bucks. Not exactly sure how much for 10 full sheets of this. 
So yeah, just a regular eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper. So what I did, Googled some images on the internet, sized them up so that they're appropriate. Highly recommend before you print it, you do this in your printer, loaded this side of the paper up in the printer, put a max mark on it, whatever you want to do, run it through the printer on the top sheet in your paper feed. It's a good thing I did, because if I put my stickers up, I would have been printing on the back side of them. That's not too fun. And I did this in black and white. That way I didn't waste my fancy color ink. And I could uh, just do a test punch, right? Hammer it with the punch, see how, how it fits. Is it the right size? That's what I did. These are all slightly off, but uh, some of them are anyway. Because I was in a hurry to get one done so I can make a video. Instead of farting around and using my old save file. So here you go. There's uh, the Vici flags here. Vici flags here. You can do this with any flag. Like a World War One flag or you know, country that's not on the map and you can't find a roundel for. Just find the flag that matches the roundel. And line up your punch. This little, there we go. It's pretty close to center. No, there we go. And there you go. You've got yourself a piece of sticker that looks like a Vici Ferrando. Alright. Now I gonna do a quick one because I use paper. Just regular paper and uh, a glue stick and horrible results here. It's peeled right off. I mean, I could have used better paper or better glue, but I've already printed out, print, punched out one of these uh, Italian roundels. If I can ever open it up. Uh, isn't that the way it always works? If you're trying to show somebody how easy something is, it's never that easy. You can do a hundred of them. You go to show somebody, there you go. So here I just peeled it off. Now it's stuck to my finger. So I'll line her up on the magnet. Done. And there you go. She's the same size. All these are three quarter inch ceramic magnets. I think I bought them in packs of 30 or 40. I ended up buying two packs because I wanted to have at least 10 for all the nations. And then I had way too much. So I made the Canadians and I made the uh, Chinese in case they come out of China. I double-sided those, gave them five or so of these. I made a pile of French ones, although rarely do I need more than one or two French. Yeah, speaking of French, these this is the prime example of why... Regular paper wasn't working for me. That sticker stuff is working great, though. I did that on the back side of these ones before. Just as an experiment. And a surprise, it's the one that lasted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this here. And I'm just going to show you how I waterproof these. Because that's just regular paper and with fingerprints and dirty fingerprints and whatnot. I just bought a bottle of this. The cheapest brand I could find of clear top coat nail polish and why I bought that is it's super easy to apply it comes with a well one with a brush anyway and voila you've got yourself a nice clear coating on top there that will be waterproof when it dries easy peasy I've done it on all of these here which is why they kind of not these ones here the other box but they already have that slightly glossy sheen but you notice know, you get that slight sheen that's because I waterproofed all of these ones and yeah these were easy peasy honestly if, if you're gonna do it on cardstock like a piece of piece of cereal box or hardboard or cardboard or something like that. I just took this whole sheet 
I didn't use the sticker paper for that. I just glued the sheet to the product I was going to punch out and punched them out together. So, problem is, my punch doesn't go very fat. So it was a cereal box with no corners because that's too much apparently for my stuff. But yeah, this stuff dries in about 5-10 minutes to the touch and you're good to go. So yeah, I got all these magnets here. Let's get this out of the way so I don't accidentally put nail polish in on that. That would make me very angry. So yeah, I got all these magnets here and I double sided them all that way. So you got a stack of magnets here. These ones are all, the polarity is switched on all of them. So if they're matching, they start running around, right? So now you say you have two rows of magnets and you want them to line up properly, but you don't want weirdness like that to happen. You just flip them and they just lock right in place. Done. See? Now you're going to have two rows on your tech chart side by side. And if you need to, since you need to flip them, and you want to store them out of the way, put a big stack of them together. And this is why that paper, just the regular paper there, was not the best idea. And the sticker, it's uh, got a much nicer glue, is working out much better for me. The result of trying to eyeball it from the top until I figured out to do it from the bottom. All right, so that's uh, the roundels on the board. Now I'm gonna show you my, let's see if this thing will work here. Uh, not really. That's my, uh, my magnetic board. I made that one myself really quick. Honestly, it was amazingly easy. I uh, had this. I bought a strip of this. All it is is a piece of trim that I stuck around the edge here. I went to the hardware store. They had a piece of ducting that was under five bucks. A, a nice piece of square ducting. Perfect, like a patch. I grabbed that. Nice square corners. Perfect, ready to go. Grab one sheet of this stuff. This stuff was uh, like two bucks for an eight foot length. So two bucks did the whole circum the whole uh, edge of this without, uh, that way you don't end up cutting yourself on the sheet metal. And I didn't have any thin plywood lying around. I didn't want to put a great big fat piece on the wall. So I just grabbed at the hardware store. They have, uh, you know, they can cut your wood for you. And there's always scraps lying around from somebody else who didn't want a piece. That's where I got this one. And that was like $2 because it's only cheap, like quarter inch plywood. And I didn't glue any of this stuff. Well, I did, but I had a tube of silicone lying around from when I did a repair on the house. And silicone is amazing glue. I mean, it's what holds your fish tank together. So uh, I just did a couple little swirls on the bottom here and a swirl on the bottom edge where this would be. And I just slid them on and pressed it down. That's it. Next day, it's on the wall, perfectly fine. And as you can see, I got some fairly fat stacks of these magnets. Here's my, uh, as I was showing you, you want to make them match up because you start doing some weirdness here like you know they stick right but they also push you can have all sorts of mess now let's just get these out of the way what i did for these this is this this sheet here i like it'll fit in here all right with the magnets on but when you're starting a game, I don't want to have magnets all over it. So I just took this, grabbed some of that magnetic strip stuff, put a couple strips of that on there, and voila, she sticks. I don't need to worry about where I put it. But to make it neat, I also designed it so that it would fit inside the corners. That same magnetic tape, cut the fit. There you go. Oh, of course. You just, oh, of course, I got it backwards. 
just slide her along. Fortunately, I put the magnetic tape right there so it doesn't want to stick. But, you know, sticks right above, good enough for me. This magnetic tape, I just bought the fat stuff. That way I could cut it in half. And I've used it for other things like uh, with these coastal guns here. They're actually just the old AAs. I haven't modified anything yet, but uh, yeah, quick, simple piece of magnetic tape on the bottom. You're done. I did the same thing with the uh, forts that you that come with D-Day. I made my own uh, factory pieces. I'll show a video on where I got these chips and why I made them out of this. But uh, yeah, they're also magnetic, or at least an example of each one is. I made myself a little, you know, that's the hard way. Let me show you the easy way. A magnetic whiteboard. You can buy it pretty much anywhere. It's just this little magnetic whiteboard they wanted 20 bucks for. And that homemade rig, I made that for 10. So, and it only took me about an hour worth of work. So, I guess when you got time, that's cool. And if you don't have time, 10 bucks for an hour of my work is uh, pretty undervalued. But I enjoy making my own stuff for this. Anyway, hopefully this... Uh, it's going on a little longer than I thought, just going over roundels, but uh, yeah, that's as far as I am with this. If I buy anything fancy or figure out anything uh, to make the backs of these a little easier, something that anybody can do with uh, buying heavy machinery like a fancy drill press or something, then I will uh, add on to this video. Otherwise, thank you. Hopefully, if you were thinking about roundels or wondering what you need for the game, honestly, you only need four of these and about two of these. That's it for Spain. So, four and two. When it comes to Vichy, there is a lot of French territories. A lot of them are worth nothing. But it does give access to landing of planes and whatnot for the Allies. So you could be able to shut down the entire Western Africa. So we use those. We also throw them underneath the ships. But I haven't, I, I don't, I'm not going to buy a whole French set just to paint them all Vichy in case they go Vichy. Um, what else do we use? These communist ones. If you're going to get any, I'd say, or make any, I'd say make about 10. That should be plenty. And that's if you take over all of China. Let me just take a look here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, make it 15 if you take over all of China. But these guys already got five on the board. So they... Don't need 15. Um, well, 15. It's 16 with the... So they would need uh, 11. Because there's 16 with the uh, communist place I didn't count last time. So, Including the islands, of course, of Formosa and Hainan. All right. So that's it. Um, quick... I know it's a lovely color, but uh, scrapbooking section, so it doesn't really cater to me as much as others. And yeah, they had all sorts of weird fancy stamps, all sorts of sizes and colors and shapes too. I don't know if that interests anybody, but yeah, just uh, figured I'd share where I found this because it's pretty uh, common for there to be a scrapbooking store somewhere around. And... Um, yeah, that's it for roundels and magnetic tape and ceramic magnets, double-siding those. Definitely, if you're going to do the fit, fat magnets, double-side them. If you're just buying, if you're just using pieces of like magnetic tape, this stuff isn't a big deal. You don't need to worry about it pushing the ones beside it away. 
I just wanted to be able to stack them and you can't stack the magnetic tape very well. You can't stick them in a big stack like this. Here, because uh, I don't have a lot of room here. Notice that I don't have quite everybody here. Often people are all gunning for this wartime economy, especially if you're somebody like France, gives you a chance to get free money, right? Anywhere between two and 12 bucks. So why wouldn't you? If I run out of space, I just slap it like that. When I stick them like that, that means everybody's got it. So we don't even have to worry about looking, oh, am I on there? No, everybody's there. Everybody got it. Okay. Enjoy. And, uh, yeah, I didn't get cat bomb this time. That's a, or maybe I did. I can't remember. Alrighty. Have a good one. Rent Carcass saying see you later and hopefully this video is good for you.